G'day there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru and welcome to lesson 10 of my Learn Dynamo series. So today we're looking at curves and edges in our geometry sub-series. So we've been through points and lines already, um, curves and edges in the next logical step and we're getting close to the end of the series, unfortunately. Um, so previously we dealt with points and lines, curves and edges are the next step. So we're going to keep it Revit focused. Um, so instead of focusing on abstract forms and things that we don't use, We'll focus on practical applications in Revit for examples of how to use these tools. So we've looked at coordinate systems, points and vectors. Now we're looking at curves and edges, um, which are basically a more complex form of a line uh, in that they don't have to just be defined by two points. They can be um, a curve as the name implies and they can be sourced from the edges of elements. And then we'll also briefly touch on polycurves as well, which are basically just a joined set of curves. Um, and we'll look at surfaces, faces and solids in the next tutorial. So we'll go straight to Dynamo, uh, no more time to waste. So I've got a demonstration model here and all that's in the model is a table. Um, and in the example that we're looking at today, I wanna to find a script that can place chairs and objects around a table um, at a spacing that I nominate. And this, this doesn't just have to be a square table. Um, it could be a curved table or it could be an element that's quite complex in shape. So we're gonna use a lot of operations that relate to edges. Um, so the first thing we need to do is actually select model elements um, in order to source the Revit geometry as the basis. So we're just going to take the table as a model element and then we're going to also take an edge. So you can see here when I select edge, I can select any edge in Revit really. So it's very dynamic. You can also select face and you can also select points on faces. And um, you can also select multiple edges, but we'll look at that, that in a little bit. So if I just run my script, um, straight away you can see we've already got a few pieces of geometry in Dynamo. We've got an edge that we selected, we've got a point on a face and we've got a surface. But where's the geometry for the element? Well, we have to actually feed that into a node called element geometry. And now if I run that, you'll see that our whole tables come through to Dynamo. Um, be careful with the node because it can't handle highly complex forms, it will be very slow. So, you know, don't feed in a city model here, for example, um, but simple elements Dynamo can definitely handle. But the reason why we're working with edges is we wanna keep everything simple. So we're just gonna turn off our point on face and our face nodes, because we're not working with those today. We're just dealing with edges. And we'll keep our table geometry here, just so we have a visual reference in Dynamo when we no longer have Revit off to the side. Um, so we've taken our element geometry, but that's really all we're using it for. It's just there as a reference. So the first thing we're going to do with that curve is we're going to offset it away from the table. So if I just feed in curve into curve offset, and then I feed in slider, it should let me push my curve away. I'll just go to automatic mode. Notice how I can push my curve away or into the table depending on where I set myself on my slider, which is between negative 1500 and 1500. Um, so in this case, we're gonna push away from the table by, let's say 400 mil. Um, so we have two curves at this point. Uh, basically one of them is the curve that we started with, which I can turn off as a preview, which just leaves us with our offset curve, which is the one that we'll move forward with. The next thing we need to do is put the curve on the floor. So we're gonna use a parameter called pull onto plane which as it makes it sound like, will literally pull the curve onto the plane you define. In this case, we've picked a very simple plane, the X, Y plane, which is basically at Z zero. And we're gonna feed in our curve. And as you expect, we should end up with a curve down on the ground. So we'll just turn off our offset curve. But because we're working with downstream data, as you'd expect, these will all still respond to each other. So as I change this node here, you'll expect that I'll be able to actually keep offsetting from the table. So we're gonna take this forward to another one, which is called extend. So at the moment, if I place chairs along this curve, there's gonna be a chair halfway on and off the table leg, which we don't want. We wanna pull in that curve either side. So we're gonna use an integer slider here to inset. So we're gonna do a negative 300 inset and we'll feed in our curve and we'll just turn off this particular curve because underneath it, will be a curve that has the end inset by 300. Notice there that there's a slight inset to the curve now. And that will work along the path of the curve. So if you have a curved curve, it will move along that path instead. It won't straighten out the curve. Um, if we just go one step further, we can take that particular curve and also inset from the start of the resulting curve. 
to equally insert either side. So obviously you'd expect as I pull this in, my curve will shrink. Um, but for now, we're just gonna go minus 300 either side. So now we're moving forward with this curve. So you can see as I apply more actions to the curve, we end up with a more intelligent piece of geometry. We're gonna now try and subdivide this path. So there's a couple of ways to do this. And the reason we wanna do this is so that we can place chairs at the points that we're gonna subdivide by. So the first thing we're gonna do is take the length of our curve and divide it by a maximum spacing, apply a floor to that so that we can round down to the nearest integer so that we know how many chairs we can fit of our maximum possibility. And then we're gonna create a sequence. And the sequence is gonna be, be between zero and one. And it's gonna have number of items equal to the divisions plus one, because we're gonna to wanna to divide it by one more points than the spacing of the chairs, as you would with any spacing rule typically, um, because we do finish on a point. So we're gonna take that curve and feed that in. And straight away, you can see that we'll end up with 3.6 rounded down to three, which will give us a sequence of four numbers between zero and one at equal spacing. So the reason we want these is because we're gonna ultimately feed these into a node called curve point at parameter. So point at parameter will say how long between zero and one are we along the curve? So I'm gonna take my source curve back here and then I'm just gonna feed those points at parameter in. And notice now we're breaking our line into four points. So I could technically actually just hide my line at this point and now you can just see those points we're gonna place our chairs at. And as I change my max spacing, you can see that I end up with more or less divisions as that max spacing hits the floor and then performs a sequence to feed into point at parameter. Um, we're also gonna get the normals at each of those parameters as well. So we're gonna take our curve and then we're gonna take the parameters. And at each of those points, it will find the perpendicular line uh, to that, that wall. So, we can't actually see these at the moment because they're vectors. So they're just directions at the moment. I can see that I'm, I'm moving negative one in the y direction and zero in the x and z direction. So I know I'm pointing this way. There are a couple of ways you can visualize a vector. So the first one is just to draw a line in that direction from that point. So if we just take our points and our vectors and do a line by start point direction length, now you can see your vectors visualized for you. So that sort of helps just to understand which way the vector is pointing. We've, we've basically formed an arrow uh, for us to reference. So we're just gonna turn off our preview so that we don't see it for now. Um, we could also reverse vectors as well. So we could feed in the opposite of that vector. And if I had turn on the preview for that, now you can see we're facing the other way. But for now, we'll, we'll keep the reverse vector in there. For, actually, no, we won't. I know that we need, it. we need it to be facing just the normal direction for this scenario to get the chairs to point towards the table. But this would be a way to sort of flip them if they're facing the wrong way once you place them. And you'll see what that means shortly. Um, you can also reverse the direction of a curve alternatively. So we can go all the way back to the start of our script and just turn around our curve instead. And obviously the normals will flip by 180 as well as a result. Okay, um, there is an alternative way we can divide this line. So if I just turn off the preview for my points to parameters, sorry, I've got a cat on my chair. Um, if we just take our alternative method, which is points at equal segment length, we can, we can set an explicit number of divisions along that curve instead. So all we need to do is take our floor instead and take our curve. And this will generate the interim, inter, interim points but it won't generate the start point and the end point, which is a problem, because uh, we do need those to place our chairs at the start and the finish as well. So if I generate the start point and the end point, I can generate these into lists. Must be a bug flying around. Um, so there you go, you can see that we get the same result, but we have to use four times the number of nodes to get the outcome. So we don't want to do it that way. So we're just going to disconnect these and we're not going to use that method. We're going to go back to our point at parameter. There's definitely a bug flying around. <laughs> Sorry, my cat's having a good time chasing a bug around my computer. Um, there's other ways to divide curves as well. So you can do points at equal segment lengths, but here you say exactly what the spacing is. So you would say exactly 450, and it would do a best fit um, with excess on the end. <laughs> um, likewise, you can do equal chord length as well, if you know how to work with chords. 
Um, but for this case, this is the quick and most direct way to do it. What we can do now actually is get the rotation angle of the vector as well. So we're going to rotate, we're going to compare the angle versus the y axis. And our rotation plane is the z plane, so that we're rotating around the xy plane. So we're just going to take those vectors. And this will become our, our facing angle of our family as a result. Because what we're going to do is feed these into a place family node and a set family rotation node, which you recall from earlier tutorials. But first, we're just going to look at a couple of examples of how to validate um, whether curves are closed and how to patch them or fill them in with the surface. So I've got two nodes here. One of them is generating me a circle and one of them is generating me an arc. And these are sitting just back near my, near my dynamo origin. So you'll see I've got a circle, but I've also got an arc as well. Obviously my arc isn't closed. So if I feed this in to validate if it's closed, you'll see we get a false. If I feed my circle in, you'll see we get a true. And obviously I can't fill in a non-closed surface with patch, which is how to create a surface from a curve, but I can feed in my circle to build a surface as a result. So just, just to be mindful of how that works, we will go more into surfaces in our next tutorial, but that's the starting point. Okay, so we'll just probably freeze those nodes and just turn off their previews as well, just so that we're dealing with our table and only our table. There we go, there's our table. Okay, so now we're gonna place families. Uh, so we'll just take the family type of a chair from our project and we're gonna place them at points, but we'll go to manual mode first before we place them. Okay, so we're gonna take the vectors as our rotation. So we're gonna check the rotation angle of each vector which we have and feed that into our family rotation. And we're gonna place our families at those points. So now what would happen if I ran the script is we should expect to see chairs get placed along the table. So if I just run my script, uh, our families weren't made. Why is that? We've got points. Okay, we need to redirect it to the family again, just so it knows which one we're placing. I'll try that again. I might just reopen the script. I think maybe it needed a refresh. Okay. I'll just cross check my family is in my project. It is. Okay. We'll just go back and pick our edge again, just to be sure that we have the right reference. Which we do. Okay. So we'll try placing that family again. And I might just make a fresh family types node, just to be confident that we don't run into any any potential errors which can occur. Okay. And we'll feed that in as our family type for our chair. So now if I run that script, we should expect to see these placed along the edge. And there we go. You can see it's divided the points and it's placed the chairs facing the angle based on the direction of the curve. Um, now obviously that looks really basic and not super impressive. So let's, um, let's one up the script and let's go for something a little bit more complicated. So we're gonna make an abstract edge of a table to place chairs along. Okay, so we'll just again refresh our script. I would usually run this from Dynamo Player, which would refresh the script automatically for me. Um, but what we'll do here is we'll pick this edge instead. And this is obviously a curved edge and it's a lot longer as well. Let's go and change our parameters. Let's say we want to inset by 400, sorry, offset by 450. And let's um, inset either side by 350. And let's say our max spacing is now 550. And we have our chair. So now we would expect that we can run the same script, but along a more complex edge as a result. And there you go. So you can see that the only thing that's happened here is that the normal direction was not correct. So in this case, we would actually need to reverse our normal in that case. So we'll take our vector, reverse it, and then instead we'll feed that in. 
Uh, actually, we probably need to offset in the other direction. That's probably why that happened. So what I should do here is actually go back to my curve offset parameter and offset by negative 450. And there you go. Now you can see it's been placed around the table the right way versus the curve. Um, we could do something more complicated, which is actually to use more than one edge. So we can do select edges and we can say we want this one, this one, and this one. And let's just freeze down our first edge to freeze the rest of our script. And we'll finish our selection. And you can see we have three curves. The problem is if I run this, we have three different curves. They're not joined. So what we need to do is actually form a poly curve by joined curves. Poly curve by joined curves. And you can set a tolerance if you know that some of the curves don't quite meet, say in a less accurate model. We'll just turn, uh, we'll keep our preview on, but we'll just change our element to this table instead. So now if I rerun that, we should expect to see that form with three edges. So essentially we have the three curves on their own, but now we have a poly curve. And for most aspects, you can treat a poly curve the same as a curve. So what I can do now instead is I'll feed my poly curve in instead of my curve. And I'm gonna do everything except for place families just to show you that it will work the same way. So now if I rerun that script, we should expect to see our points of parameters. Somewhere along here, we need to probably preset something. So you can see we've got our poly curve, ah, which is being inset. So we need to do that the other, other direction. Cool. And we're normalizing it onto a plane. Okay, so that's, that's where it's not working. Now it's working. I might just again refresh my script. I think that it needs to be refreshed to wipe the original selection from all the other nodes. Okay, so now if I run that script again, and there you go, we can see those points occurring around that polyline. So um, much more powerful of a way to place these. And obviously my vector rotations are gonna be more complicated now because I'm dealing with a curve. So what I can do now is unfreeze this node and I should be able to place chairs around that, that form. And obviously this is where you can see this, the benefit of such a script. And this doesn't just have to be chairs around a table. It can be anything along a line, essentially. Occasionally you will run into some funny little errors such as this, where the point has occurred around a corner and it doesn't understand how to face it the right way. But for the rest of it, you can see that we've really achieved quite a good spacing rule around this table. And that could be computers, it could be anything really. So quite powerful. Um, so thanks for watching today. Um, if you need any more tips on geometry relating to edges, I suggest going to the Dynamo Primer or the Dynamo Forums. Uh, there's a lot of data there in regards to trigonometry and more complex forms. However, I don't want to go into that because I'll probably lose everyone's attention if I do that. Um, the next lesson, we're going to be looking at surfaces and solids. And then beyond that, we'll be applying all these techniques to some more practical applications, such as generating tower forms in Revit using Dynamo. <clears throat> using Dynamo. So thanks for watching today. Um, feel free to join me in the next session, uh, which should be uploaded shortly. And if you're not already following or subscribing me, feel free to do so. Um, and uh, if you've got any questions or queries, feel free to leave them down below. And hopefully I'll see you on the next session. Uh, thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.